Hey guys, how's it going? Tumu Cruz here with another cycling video here in Toyota, Japan. So today I'm doing a follow-up video of my Tannis airless solid tires. So you can see I've got these beautiful red solid tires on my commuting bike. And I've had these tires on my commuter bike for the last year. And you guys have asked for a follow-up video on how they've been performing for me. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. This is not an installation video. So if you're interested in seeing the full process from start to finish and how I installed these tires, you can check out that original video. But today I'm just gonna be showing you guys the status of the tires, what's been working for me and what's been bad for me. So I've been riding these for about a year and I'm a daily bike commuter. So I would say I've gotten at least 5,000 kilometers on this tire, possibly more. And I have not had any major problems. So the main reason I got these tires was so that I wouldn't have any punctures, I wouldn't have to deal with any flats on my way to work. And so because of that, I've accomplished my number one goal of getting these tires in the first place, and that is I didn't have to deal with any flats, any unexpected flats on my way to work. And not only when I'm commuting, I can do these awesome rides. So today I'm here with my wife, Tunchan. We're going for a nice cycle here into the deep countryside of Toyota, Japan. And this is our full 100 kilometer ride into the deep mountains. So we've been doing some climbing. We've been going on some dirty roads. And today we actually rode over here to Yahagi Dam. So if you wanna see our full ride, I'll link that down below as well. You can check out the full ride. And I was on this bike for the entire ride. So these tires have been doing an awesome job both for commuting and for regular rides. I will say I have noticed a small like performance downgrade compared to using normal aired tires you are going to get some more rolling resistance it's not going to be as smooth of a ride it's going to be a little bit bumpier or not a little bit bumpier considerably bumpier so if you're looking for the most comfortable ride maybe these aren't for you but for me the number one important thing was i didn't want to deal with any annoying flats i wanted a bomb proof bike that i can just ride to work and ride wherever i want to go and not have to worry about carrying any spare tubes and I don't have to deal with that risk. So for me, that was my goal. I don't mind the extra rolling resistance. I don't mind going a little bit slower, especially when I'm riding with my wife. So she's a little bit slower than me. So it's actually good for me to get a little bit more of a workout. But if I were to be going on some fast group ride and trying to get some KOMs, then yeah, maybe these tires aren't for you. So it really depends on what you're going for. But for me, in my experience, I've been riding this for over a year on this bike in a variety of different conditions in the winter, in the wet. Um, in the wet, it is maybe a little bit more slippery because you can't get that lower tire pressure. But I mean, you can just get used to it. And I've been riding on some dirty roads today, so we can see here. Let's take a closer look at the tire. You can see we've got some dirt on here. We've got some sand on here. I've been riding uh, through a bunch of puddles today, through different dirt sections, and no problems. You just got to learn to adjust to ride with the tire. It's not going to ride the exact same way as an air tire, but as long as you learn to adjust to it and you can deal with the bumps, it's not a problem. So for me, that's a minor discomfort, and it's so nice not having to worry about flats and not carry anything with that. Um, there have been a few cuts on the tires and some other special surprises. So sometimes there are some different things that will stick in here, some metal pieces, like I found a stapler in there once, but on a normal aired tire, like that's gonna be the end of your ride. But for this tire, it's pretty much bomb proof. Oh, actually I just noticed I'm missing one of the, the bolts here on my crank, so I gotta get that fixed. But you can see my bike is in pretty rough, messy shape today from today's ride. But these tires have been performing solidly and yeah, there's no pun intended there. <laughs> so as for how much longer I plan to continue using these tires, I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna ride them into the ground and see how much longer they can go. So until I can't use them anymore, or it's not safe for me to use them anymore, that's probably when I'm gonna change them. It doesn't make sense to change them now. Uh, they might be getting a little bit flat in the backside especially, because that's where the majority of the, the pressure goes on the back tire. So it is flattening out here a little bit in the back, but it's not a problem. I can still easily hold some pretty fast speeds on it. So we did that on today's ride. And we're gonna end this video with a little bit of a continuation of our ride. So if you wanna see my thoughts while we're going on the ride, we're gonna continue on with that. So anyway, that's just my quick update on these tires. They've been doing great for me so far. And if you're on the edge of wondering if you wanna give them a try or not, I would say that I haven't had any bad experience with them so far and a whole year of not having any punctures has been a really big lifesaver. But at the same time, my wife does use some aired tires on her bike. So we use Gator Skins on her bike. This is my favorite aired tire. So 
Uh, I can't say we haven't gotten any more punctures on this anymore because today we got a flat tire. Yeah, but this must <laughs> We got a flat tire in the first five kilometers of today's ride and today was a hundred kilometer ride so we had some bad luck at the beginning of today's ride so normally I would say that these tires are pretty bomb proof and we've never gotten any flats but today we got our first flat on these tires but actually it came from the inside of the rim it wasn't from the actual tires itself but still that's an issue you have to deal with on aired tires anyway it's starting to get pretty dark out here it's time to start riding back home yeah so let's home let's home oh, my guy let's go let's go all right here we are starting the rest of our ride back home So we've got pretty close to 50K done, and we're gonna be riding all the way back home for a total of 100K today. We're going through the tunnel. Oh man, this is pretty dark. They don't have any lights in here. So while we're on our ride back home, I'll talk about my impressions of these tires while riding. So these are the road tire model, and we're on some pretty smooth roads for the most part, but you can see we've got some speed bumps on here, and I believe these tires are about like 110 PSI kind of pressure. So they're pretty much the same as a really high tire pressure road tire. But I would say that they are a little bit more stiff. So when you do hit a bump, you feel it a lot more compared to like an air tire. And the benefit with an air tire is you can lower the tire pressure if you need to. So if you're riding in rain or in some different gravel conditions, you can adjust the tire pressure to go lower to be more comfortable. You unfortunately can't do that on these tires, but if you're riding on pretty smooth roads like this, like you'll notice a big difference right here. It's really bumpy and it's pretty uncomfortable. But once we're on a smooth section like this, like this is really nice. Not to mention the, the views are incredible here. But yeah, when you're in a bumpy section, you're gonna feel it and it's gonna be a bit uncomfortable, but it's not the end of the world. It doesn't bother me too much. I've been using this for the full year, so I'm pretty used to it. I have noticed that when I go on like group rides with some faster riders, like a serious road ride group ride, I have to put out a lot more effort to stay up with them. I would say I'm losing at least like 10, maybe 20% of my energy compared to like a normal road tire. Uh, that's, there's no scientific basis in that. That's just my assumption, but I feel like I have to do a lot more work to keep up with them. But if I'm on my road bike with my normal road tires, I'm able to keep up a lot easier with that pace. So you do lose a little bit of speed, but if you're using this as a commuter tire or as an adventure bike tire, I would say you're not losing anything because like, yeah, you have to put out a little bit more effort, but you don't have to deal with any punctures or risk of any punctures. So you get that nice peace of mind. And yeah, it's so nice. I don't have to carry any extra tubes, any extra pumps, any tire levers. When I bring this bike with me, I basically just bring a multi-tool and that's all I need, my multi-tool and my lock. So with these tires, another question as we're getting to the end of the life cycle of these tires is would I buy these again? So full disclosure, I did not buy these tires. I contacted Tanis to get a sample set for the review. So the review was not sponsored. They didn't pay for the review, but they did send me over a free pair of these tires for me to review. But in my honest opinion, I would say that I would probably go for either these model again or a similar like solid airless tire, um, this kind of style tire again in the future, especially if I were continuing like daily long distance bike commuting. Currently, my bike commute has changed. I used to bike commute 40 kilometers every day, but now I'm commuting only about like seven kilometers every day. So it's a lot shorter and I can use I don't have to worry about punctures because even if I puncture, I can just like walk the rest of the way to work. It's not a big deal. But yeah, I would say if I were continuing as a bike commuter and I wanted something solid, reliable, that I didn't have to worry about punctures, I would definitely consider going with this again. But it also depends where you're commuting. So if you're commuting on like gravel roads, like maybe comfort is a lot more important to you and you could go with a nice, comfortable, tubeless kind of setup and those are pretty good now, especially the technology for tubeless tires seems to be really good with the, the thicker tire models like the gravel style tires. Not so much with the road style tires yet, but that is improving gradually. 
So yeah, I think that's most of what I wanted to talk about <laughs> with these tires. Um, I've also been really happy with the color. The color matches my bike perfectly. So this is Suica. She's a beautiful red and blue Planet X bike. And I really like the solid color tires, especially with my bike, it just matches perfectly. I used to think like colored tires are really cheesy, but now I really like them. So <laughs> there's that. And <laughs> for most of this ride, in this video anyway, we've been doing a lot of downhill, but you also notice these tires a bit more when you're climbing. They are a little bit heavier uh, depending on, well, it depends on what tire you're comparing to, but overall, I think they are a little bit heavier compared to some other solutions out there. So there is the extra weight factor, the extra rolling resistance factor. So they don't climb as fast possibly as a lighter tire setup, of course, but uh, that also depends on your engine. If you're a pretty strong rider, you're riding every day, it's not gonna matter too much if you're just like dropping your pace half a kilometer per hour or something like that. So I would say it's not a big deal unless you're trying to go for speed. But if you're just going for like enjoying the ride and something solid and reliable, I would say they're a great option. Yeah, even these bumpy roads knocked my, my light down. That's pretty intense. So with the, the solid tires, it's not so much the, the extra vibrations on your body that you have to worry about, but it's extra vibrations for things that are on your bike. So for example, on the front of my bike, I've got a lot of equipment right now. I've got my cycle computer, I've got my light, and I've got this new handlebar bag that I'm testing out. So there's a lot of stuff bundled up around there and with more vibrations going through the bike, it is gonna affect these things a little bit more. So you'll notice my, my light just a moment ago got knocked down uh, because of those vibrations. So that's another thing to keep in mind with these solid tires. If you do have extra accessories on your bike. But this is a carbon frame, so this carbon frame does absorb the vibrations a little bit more. So Perhaps if you're on an aluminum bike or steel kind of bike with these solid tires, it might be a little bit rougher, I'd imagine. Oh, this is a dam, by the way. We just left the other dam over there. So this is kind of like the baby little sister or little brother dam of that one. We've been doing a dam hunting ride <laughs> today. But yeah, really fun day out, enjoying this beautiful weather. Another thing I want to mention with these tires is, honestly, when I first got them out, I was really, really afraid to ride them like on fast downhill descents. So I was always braking and going slowly on the descents because I wasn't sure <laughs> how secure they were if I mounted them correctly. No, I don't, I don't worry at all. I just pull descent like full speed and I haven't had any issues. But uh, yeah, I remember when I first was starting out with these tires. That was something I was nervous about, but yeah, you get more comfortable with your equipment the more you test it and make sure everything is working properly. Man, she's dropping me on this climb. I can't blame the tires though. <laughs> I gotta blame myself for getting out of shape lately and not riding as much as I used to ride. But yeah, on a smooth road like this, like this section is just awesome. Smooth pavement. I don't notice anything with these tires. They just roll flawlessly. We're flying on this road right now, like holding 40 kilometers per hour. Granted, it is a downhill, but still, when you get some nice pavement, some nice smooth sections, these tires are pretty great. But when you get on a rough section like this, you're gonna feel those vibrations. I should also mention, I'm a former mountain biker and we have a lot of gravel roads in my hometown, so I'm used to the vibrations. I actually love vibrations and I like riding on this kind of like pavement or this rough kind of section. So it doesn't bother me at all. I'm completely used to it. So it depends on what kind of rider you are and if this kind of riding bothers you. Anyway, I think I'm gonna cut this video here. This is all I wanna talk about with these tires. And if you wanna see more cycling videos here in Japan, be sure to subscribe. We've got a bunch of videos here. We upload weekly. And if you have any more questions about these tires, about my setup, leave it in the comments below and I'll try and answer as quickly as I can. 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, guys. Also, a special thank you to all of our awesome supporters over on Patreon. Thanks to your guys' support, we're able to continue filming these videos, and we really appreciate your guys' support. That's it for today, guys. Thanks as always, and we'll see you next time here on Tuo Cruise. Yeah.